On this episode of China Uncensored, who would have thought a one-party state wouldn't approve of democracy? Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. You know, a lot of people have said that China just isn't ready for democracy. There's too many people who aren't educated enough. And as former Chinese Minister of Foreign Affairs Li Jiaoxing said, Transportation is not developed in some places, so direct election will be difficult. Yes, bad roads are the reason China doesn't have democracy. Doesn't stop New York, though. But back to Chinese democracy. Highly anticipated for years, promised but pushed back multiple times, and then ultimately banned in China for being too controversial. Wait, that's the well-intentioned but ultimately mediocre Guns N' Roses album. Never thought that Axl Rose would be one of the most woke celebrities on China. But for real Chinese democracy, look no further than Wukang Village in China's southern Guangdong province. In 2011, the entire village erupted into protests. Their local communist officials were taking villagers' land and selling it to real estate developers for huge profits. Something that's happened in countless villages across China for years. But in Wukong, villagers put up barricades and kicked out the officials. But instead of the villagers getting Tiananmen squared, this guy stepped in, Wang Yang, the party secretary for Guangdong province. Surprisingly, instead of brutally crushing the protesters, he let the Wukong villagers vote for new officials. And they elected this guy, Lin Zhu Luen, one of the protest leaders. This was an unprecedented moment in modern Chinese history, where the Communist Party backed down in the face of protests and allowed for real democratic elections. Media began referring to it as the Wukong model. Some people thought that soon this kind of local level democracy could be implemented everywhere across China. So let's look in and see how it's doing five years later. Oh, well, that didn't last long, did it? Yes, apparently the Wukong model is to briefly allow democracy and then crush it. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. And you know what? Even during the period when democracy worked in Wukong, it didn't really work. After villagers elected Lin Zuluan to represent them, he found himself immediately blocked from doing, well, anything by officials the next level up. So five years later, much of the land taken from villagers has still not been returned. Frustrated by this, three months ago, Lin Zhu Luen had threatened to bring his people back out onto the streets. Unbelievable! How dare he ask for the thing he was promised five years ago? Arrest this man! <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, wh what's that, Shelley? Oh, they did arrest him. Not for threatening to hold public protests, mind you, but for taking tens of thousands of dollars in bribes and kickbacks. And if you think those are just trumped up charges, you couldn't be more wrong. While being detained by authorities, Lin admitted to the charges. And by admitted, I mean confessed on state-run CCTV. So you know it's legit. Good thing they suddenly discovered his bribes and kickbacks right before he was about to mobilize those pesky protesters. And last week, they formally sentenced Lin Zuluan to three years in prison. That makes Lin now the third democratically elected village official involved with the 2011 Wukong protests to be imprisoned by authorities. Two others were jailed in 2014. And there you have it. Proof that democracy is a terrible idea, because clearly the uninformed citizens only elect criminals. But for some reason, Wukong villagers seem to suspect something fishy is going on. After Lin Zuluan was arrested in June, they started protesting his detention. Oddly enough, while waving the flag and shouting, long live the Communist Party. I know it looks like there's some kind of disconnect here, but actually, it's pretty smart in a way. Can the Communist Party really accuse you of subverting state power when you're cheering for them? What are they going to do? Crack down on these people? Back to that in a moment. We have so much footage of the protests in Wukong, partly because Western media have been reporting from there. And authorities have been trying to drive the reporters out. 
Back in June, one BBC reporter expressed his concern that if he were to leave, riot police might be sent in. But that's silly, as one local official assured him. It's only that reporter's fantasy. The reporter eventually left for a while. And guess what? His fantasy came true! The riot police were sent in to restore social harmony, bearing peace offerings of tear gas and rubber bullets. So now it's time to ask the most important question of all. Whose fault is it? Fortunately, my favorite state-run media, Global Times, has done a thorough investigation. According to this editorial, some foreign media have been unscrupulously inciting, planning, and directing chaos. Yes, foreign media are to blame. Those unscrupulous Western reporters have been stirring up trouble just so they can camp out for weeks in some podunk village in the backwards of China and promote their so-called agenda of human rights to undermine the Communist Party. But you know what really undermines the Communist Party? Democracy, free elections. Because if people are allowed to elect their own representatives, and those representatives are actually permitted to do their jobs, then how can the Communist Party control things? The truth is, while the Communist Party is in power, it's never going to give up control. In fact, the leadership of the Communist Party is literally written into the Chinese constitution. So yeah, that's not going away. And anyone who tries to change the status quo can be in trouble. Remember Wang Yang, the party secretary of Guangdong province five years ago? Well, he was the one who arranged for Wukong to have those elections in the first place. And at the time, it seemed like a clever way of avoiding unrest while making the party look good. But a lot of his political opponents, including people in the decrepit toad with glasses faction, were upset that Wang allowed this democratic experiment to happen. Some analysts say that now, Wang Yang's political rivals are actually the ones behind the events that led up to the new Wukong protests this year. Because the chaos shows that Wang's experiment failed. And making Wang look bad is part of a political strategy. Because word on the street is that Wang's homie-in-chief Xi Jinping may be looking to place Wang in a new position, where he would replace one of those political rivals. That would be harder to do if Wang is discredited. And Jiang Zemin's faction really needs a win right now, because one of their own just got purged. Oh, sorry, I mean placed under investigation for corruption. Basically, it's China's Game of Thrones. So what do you think? Leave your comments below, and check out the China Uncensored Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Uh, I'm very happy to answer that, but I will have to kill all of you here if I answer. <laughs> so is that is? I am Rubber, and you are one of the most powerful politicians in the world. <laughs>